my good, good friend Daniel uh, is receiving it. So Peter's going to do it, but I, I just like to say that from the Patrick McKee Festival point of view, you know, Dan Hurley has made a huge contribution. He has been, from day one, anytime he wanted to be, wanted help, advice, Dan was a man, you know, a wonderful person, a wonderful man, a wonderful musician. My personal relationship goes back for years. He was playing the market every Sunday night and I follow him and every, every talk. A good friend and most deserving, deserving man to get the, get the awards. And a great, great, great person. And uh, I got to introduce Don Peter Brown from RT to do the actual official stuff. So, and thank you all for your advice. Thank you. Thanks very much, Cormac. And yes, you, you've said a lot of it there, but the award is a very important thing. And I remember the first recipient was Johnny O'Leary. You couldn't name them all because you'll always leave someone out, but I know that, for example, last year it was Anna Nicky McAuliffe, um, Mikey Duggan, who passed away during the year, also received it. So this year's recipient is certainly very deserving of it. Born in Valley Desmond, and he, I think, was destined to play the fiddle, but in some way he took a turning a different way, possibly due to Paddy O'Keefe, and played the accordion. And uh, then that's also the country where Tom Billy Murphy did, so he plenty of music. So he learned the music young. He went to London, I think, for about 20 years at the age of 18, and he met many of the great players who were over there at the time, Raymond Rowland, Bobby Casey, and in particular Michael Gorman, who was a nephew of a great Sligo fiddle player. Uh, but this Michael Gorman is a flute player, and I think Dan spent a lot of time with him. Now, um, he did, however, come home, and since that time, he's been a major person in the music around here, teaching it and playing it. I'd say that anywhere where the music is played, Dan Hurley is known. One other thing which he did, very important too, is he published two books of the music of Steve Rotra, and these were original photocopies of the, the, the written music of Paul Dick and Tom Billy Murphy, so it's very interesting when you when you open them you actually see the, the music exactly as these people wrote it, and if you look carefully at the books also you see that there are two pictures of them with two previous presidents of Ireland, so he's probably waiting for the current man, Michael D, to come down and pay a state visit to him. <laughs> I, I can say from my own point of view that in RT we've had different occasion to, to call on Dan for advice or help and he's always given it and not just uh, is he a great musician but also he's a great sense, sense of humour and that always makes it a double pleasure to meet him. Now if you bear with me we, we have a CD of just a small bit of Dan which uh, we recorded a small bit here in this hotel some years ago and also a Kelly House paid a visit to Formoy and there Kieran Hammerman met. Dan as well, so bear with us and we'll just hear this now if that's okay. And you yourself are born into the slides and focus. You're, you're from this country here, Steve Lover. Yeah. I was born in Bally Desmond, little village on the Cock Kelly Water, and Steve Lover. And uh, you know, I'd be only about a field away from the Kelly Water, like you could, you could nearly kick a, a football back to Kelly from where I live. The only trouble is that somebody picked it up behind and kicked it over twice. Uh, but, I mean, if we, if we hit a slither back there, I'm cock man, you see, if we hit a slither back there, that wouldn't know what it was at all. Where did you get an interest in music? Well, you know, when, when, I was, when I was young, I went to school, we had a music teacher in school. But she wasn't really employed as a music teacher, she was just, she had, there was a piano in school, and she was teaching us all tunes, and they were mostly Scottish tunes, really. The Road to the Isles and Bonnie Prince Charlie songs and all that sort of speed money or like you know, the Kenneth MacDonald song or whatever. And when are we talking about now? The fifties, is it? Oh the forties. I went to school in the forties. Forty sixth. I left a little the wiser in, in nineteen fifty six, but man, not too much the wiser <laughs> like you know. And how come you chose the accordion? Patrick Keith. Came to our house one time during a fair in Valley Desmond. My mother had a fiddle. My mother played the fiddle. And my uncles played fiddles. No. My father was in Dublin, and my grandfather was in Dublin, the same place as Patrick I keep. And my grandmother played the concertina as well. But uh, Patrick came to the house one day during a fair and examined me and the fiddle. Now, I was in better shape than the fiddle. The fiddle hadn't been played for years. But he said he'd have to get strings for the fiddle. You know, and you'd have to come to Cash Island here to get the strings for the fiddle, like, you know. 
And he looked at my hands and he said, you make a great musician, he said. And he was going to come back with the strings. And I'm still waiting. It's a party with Mora as a man to sit down and, and play in a pub for people to listen rather than, than for dancing. Although he played for dancing. He used to play in a hall called Lacquer Hall. My mother played there once. Huh? To be about two miles from Valley Desmond. We had a great hall in Valley Desmond too called Bohans, which was more kind of modern things that were going for there. You know, the kind of Glyn Miller sound, which was the biggest hall around the area, but in the smaller hall that were still doing the carries. And there's a story talk about Pat, there's a lot of stories talk about Patrick that are lies like, but this one, this one actually isn't a lie. He was playing at a carry at uh, Blacker Hall, and he turned up a little bit the worse for wear, you know, slightly inebriated. You know, and uh, he opened the stage, and he didn't really give good value for money at all, and the hire was two shillings and a packet of eggs, ten wood beds or whatever it was mock at the time. But uh, when the Kelly was finishing up in the kitchen, tried to get paid, and the one of the house came in anyway, the one of the one of the house came in, and she caught the packet of fags and the two shillings, and she slapped them up on the table, and bang, and walked out the door. And there was another fellow inside as well, and Patrick turned around to the other fellow, and he said to him, well, he said, is even good friends meet? He said, words are seldom necessary. <laughs> <laughs> We met you at the launch of the Night of the Fair, and once or twice since then, and of course you've got an old CD called the Valley Desmond Polka. But what are you doing on this side? Well, like St. Paul on the road to Damascus, I'm carrying the sleep room for a message. <laughs> <laughs> no, the only difference is I've got a Toyota here to dump me. <laughs> If you wanted to come by river, you could have come that was really because the backwater rises. I brought my granddaughter Katie down here this morning, and we saw the river about before I came down. I taught her how big to be when we got to Valley Holy, and uh, she was amazed with it. Uh, but we could have come down by Kennewea. I suppose they didn't do all the times with the music didn't catch on. Like it. No. <laughs> <laughs> that one I wish was bad to you. <laughs> Uh, you might get away with saying something like that, but I certainly won't. <laughs> well, tell us about your impression of the music locally. Yeah, well, it's great. I mean, Jimmy's done a, a, a great service to the music here by getting the thing going on and getting the kids playing and, and bringing people. We, we brought up Paddy Crown, you know, Paddy. We brought up Paddy Crown to play for the fiddle class. I mean, that's, that's amazing. I think it's something like him up here. And, and, and uh, I mean, that's, that's great. I see, you know, the kids that. So many kids from me inside the town. It's amazing because, I mean, I make a shot for this now, too, but you know, if you went back 50 years ago, if you were caught playing a fiddle, it's a riot, you'd probably be home. Any place where that was good agricultural land, the last thing they wanted to see, you know, was a fiddle class. They said it'd be good land where, where the old music and, you know, well, wouldn't appreciate too much. I don't know, you're said no, coming from a good country like Snake. <laughs> That's I, don't know, I don't know why you're laughing when you say that. It won't come to like that. But uh, the last time we spoke, you were collecting a lot of Father O'Keefe's music. Have you kept that work up? I have, yeah. Yeah, I've collected an awful lot of Patrick Keefe stuff. But that does. Um, the other thing with Patrick Keefe, you collect one tune, you know, uh, and, and you collect the same tune again, you compare them. They'd be, they'd be a little bit different, like, you know, because he'd write to the country, the ability of the person who was playing. You know, it's nearly all fit in Water. He went in and bought it uh, according to it and like But uh, he, he sort of made a lot of music in a, a sort of, you know, to, to suit. To say if somebody was just barely allowed me to play, he'd write a tune to suit him. And if somebody was really well able to play, he'd put in the, the stores and, and the, the bits and pieces, the fiddle playing, the trippers and things like that, thing as well for them. You know, but he, he wrote it kind of. He basically didn't change the tunes that much at all. No, but he, he had a, uh, a style of his own, right, you know? He wrote them like from the I mean some people say he invented a new style of writing he didn't like to the at the time of the, the Renaissance, you know. They used to play the hops the car by number. No, after all the talk about Schlee of Local music, you associate that with horse polkas and slides. You want to play a couple of real sports? We, we only associate it with polkas and slides because of some people in RTE who give the impression that all we ever play in Schlee of Lokram is polkas and slides. I saw a friend of mine who has a band on here, he actually has a CD in yours. 
Ang mga lo... Pinigit sa nag-all minor. Pinigit sa nag-all minor. That man loves his music. Tell us about the couple of children you got up to have us. Well, uh, we went in our flat over my son and John Doe, because it was six years, so then these two reels. No, we were very short. Then. <laughs> but these, these are two reels. One is Patrick or Keith. This is a tune called Hickey's. You would not have known, you never heard it before. And the second one, you probably have heard the second one before. But there's one yet tracks on, on the tape that you wouldn't have heard before. So I'd have a bit of stuff there for your next tape. It would be good to go with me. And a distant man you are. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dan Herlihan and John Drew. Gentlemen, welcome to the stage, this year's recipient of the Schlieve Grover Award, Dan Hurley. <laughs> of course, all the things you heard on the tape, but all of you would have done all of these things for you now, if you were
Dan is going to play for you, and this is another treat.
children's play uh, written over on Patrick Keith in the monument over at John Thorne. Uh, two, two Balkas. I play them. I, I, I recorded them years ago and I call them the monument Balkas.